let's keep doing some of these Singapore math problems. So now I'm on, let's see, what am I? I'm on unit two, and I'm. this is part two. Not officially part two, but I just did unit two, part one. So from my video point of view, it's part two. But the problem we're going to do is problem number four that's on page 20. And it says, let's see, it says, Mary made 686 cookies. She sold, she sold some of them, some of them. If 298 were left over, were left over, over, how many cookies did she sell? How many cookies? The hardest part about this is writing it down. Did she sell? Which you don't have to do because it's already in your book. How many cookies did she sell? Did she sell? Maybe you think that the hardest part about this is reading my handwriting, perhaps. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can draw this out. Well, she made 686 cookies. So let's let's draw like a bar that represents all of the cookies that she made. So let's say that this bar has length 686, where the units are cookies instead of centimeters. Or maybe that should be an international standard of length, the cookie. But anyway, let's say that this bar has a length of 686. And it represents the total number of cookies she made. And then she says she sold some of them. We don't know exactly how many she sold. But let me see if I can. So let's say she sold some of them. So the, the number that she sold, let me just shade that in here. So say this is how many she sold. And we know that after she sold a bunch, she had 298 were left. So 298 were left. So 298, and if I'm just approximating, that's about 300, so it's a little bit less than half. So roughly this much was left, 298. So that's the 298. Shade that in right there. So this length is 298. So the question is asking us, how many cookies did she sell? Well, the 298 is how many she had left over. And so what she sold must be this blue chunk. This is what she sold, right? And that should make, uh, hopefully makes a little bit of intuitive sense for you. If you make 686 and you sold 298, or sorry, if you make 686 and you're left with 298, the amount that you sell must be the difference between 686 and 298. And so what is the difference, or this blue region, between 686 and 298? Well, we learned in the previous video that that is just equal to 686 minus 298. Right? This whole thing minus this is equal to the amount that she sold, is equal to and you could do that math. And, and, and actually, what I'm going to do here, and I'm assuming that uh, this is covered in, in Singapore math grades, probably grade two. But I'm actually going to review it, just because I think it's interesting. And frankly, I think you know, once you know how to do subtraction and regrouping with uh, three digits, it's pretty much the same thing to do with four or five or six or seven, which we'll do shortly. But I just want to make sure you really understand the intuition here. So if we can figure out what 686 minus 298 is, we have solve the problem. We have figured out exactly how many uh, cookies Mary sold. So let's see if we can do that. So let's figure out what 686, 686 minus 298 is. And now I'm going to go back to what we did with all of the places and, you know, and, and our buckets of, barrel of, of marbles and all of that. Because I really want to give you an intuition of what's happening when we subtract these two numbers, or what's happening. Um, when we when we do things like borrowing or regrouping, so let's say we, both of these are three-digit numbers. We have our ones place, our tens place, and our hundreds place. So let's draw those columns. And I forgot the colors that I had used previously. So let's just say the hundreds place. This is hundreds. This is tens. And this is ones. Let me draw some dividing lines. 
So we're starting off with 686. In the case of this problem, it's 686 cookies, right? So what does this 6 represent? This 6 essentially represents 6 ones, right? So we could draw them here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And these are all ones. What does this 8 represent? Well, those are tens, right? So we have eight tens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And each of these represent 10 cookies, or 10 things, or whatever we're measuring. These are tens. And what, do, what does this 6 represent? Well, that's 600s, right? So if we look at our 100 place, we could view these maybe at the top of cans. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And each of these represent 100. Each of these represent 100. And we're going to take away 298, right? 686 minus 298. So how do we do that? Well, our first temptation might be, well, let's just take away 8 ones. Right? But we don't have six ones here. I mean, we don't have eight ones here. We only have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So how can we take away eight ones? Well, what we could do is we could take, we could take one of these tens and turn it into ten ones. So what we could do is let's, let's, let's take this ten and convert it to ten ones. Right? All we're doing is, is you know, we're, taking, we're opening up this can of marbles, maybe when we're using cookies in this example. And instead of having a, a can of 10, we're going to take out all the marbles and put them as 1. So let's, let me do that. So I'm going to cross this out here, and I'm going to put 10 marbles here, or 10 cookies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And all of these are 1. And where did I get them from? Well, remember, I'm just drawing this dotted line to show that I got them by exchanging this right here. So how many ones do I have now? I have 10 plus 6. So I have 16 ones now. So now I can take away 8 of these, right? I could take away 8. So let's see. Let me write it this way. So I had 686. Let me figure out some space where I can write this neatly. So I had 686. Oh, I don't have space. Minus 298. So what did I just do? I took away one of these eight tens. So now I only have seven left, right? And I converted it to ten ones. So now I have 16 ones. So those of you familiar with borrowing, I borrowed one from the 8. Or we could say we regrouped. We took 10, and we put it into the 1's group. But either way, I'd, hopefully all of this will make sense to you, because these are all just different ways of doing the same thing. And now we can take 8 away. We, can, we have 16 ones. We can take 8 away. So what happens when we take 8 away? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then how many do we have left? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 left. So we have 8 left. I'm sorry for writing this so messy. Actually, let me clean this up a little bit, because this is ridiculous. That's my 10s. I want to free up some space so I can do this relatively neatly. Let me change this. Let me make that line. So this is 10s, just so I have some space. So that's 10s. OK. So what did we do? We borrowed 10 from the tens place, or we could say we cashed in this 10 bucket and we got 10 ones here, and that's where the 6 became 16. And then once since we used one of these tens, we now have 7 left in the tens place. Fair enough. We had 16 minus 8 is 8, right? We had 16, we got rid of 8, and we have 8. But now we have 7 tens, right? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7, and that's represented by 7 here. But we want to subtract out 9 of them. So once again, we don't have enough tens. So what can we do? Well, we could do the same. Uh, I don't want to call it a trick because it's nothing, you know, tricky about it. We're we're just we could take in, we could cash in one of these and get ten tens for them. So let me do that. So let's take this one and convert it to ten tens. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And each of these are ten. Each of those are ten. And we cash that out, right? So now what does our equation what is our not equation, what does our our problem look like? Well how many tens do we have now? We have well, let me. How many hundreds do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, right? We used to have six. Now we have five, and that makes sense because we took one of them, we took one of them, and we converted it into tens. And so, how many tens do we have now? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So we have seventeen. Well, let me just put a one here. I should cross out a seven, but we could just put a one here. So we have seventeen tens, right? So now. And you know, if you're familiar with the term borrowing, that's essentially what we did. But we didn't really borrow, right? We don't. We're not gonna. It's not like we're gonna give it back. That's borrowing. We took it. We took it from the hundreds place. So we took this this hundred canister of cookies and converted it to ten canisters of ten cookies each. That's what we did. And so that's why our six canisters of a hundred turned into five canisters. But that's why we got ten extra um, ten cookies in the tens place. Hope I'm not confusing you. But anyway, now we can subtract, right? We have to take out nine of the tens, right? This is the tens place. So we have seventeen, let's take out nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so how many do we have left? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight left. We have eight left. And that may, you know, seventeen minus nine is eight. Fair enough. Now we go to the hundreds place. We have five hundreds left. We had six, but we had to convert one of them into into tens. So we have five of those, but then we have to take out two hundreds. So let's do that. One, two, and how many do we have left? We have one, two, three. So we have three hundreds left. So six hundred eighty six minus two hundred ninety eight is three hundred and eighty eight, and you can see that here. One, two, three, three hundred. 80, this is one of them too, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 380, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So hopefully that wasn't confusing to you. I mean, you might have already known how to, how to borrow or regroup like this, but this should have hopefully given you a little bit of intuition. But just remember, all, everything I did just now, that was to solve that original problem where Mary had made 686 cookies, she sold some of them, and she had 298 left. So essentially, we now know that she must have sold 388 cookies. And you could view it the other way. You could say she, had, she started with 686 cookies. She sold 388 cookies. And now she has 298 left. And you could do the subtraction, confirm that it's true. And this backs up um, that you know the difference between 686 and 388 is 298. And the difference between 686 and 298 is 388. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.